Cutting into breaking news here on Bloomberg, Quinn Chanda Kochar has decided to seek early retirement from ICICI Bank. That information just coming through uh, in a notification to the stock exchanges. Uh, the board of ICICI Bank took her uh, request into consideration and has accepted it. Chanda Kochar has stepped down as MD and CEO of ICICI Bank. Sandeep Bakshi, who had earlier been put in uh, place as an interim CEO, uh, as a chief operating officer, will be taking over uh, as MD and CEO. This is a big moment, guys. Uh, ten years almost uh, since Chanda Kochar took uh, over the reins of ICICI Bank from her mentor, KV Kamat, uh, and now uh, under a cloud of allegations which have not entirely been lifted yet, uh, actually have not been lifted, uh, Chanda Kochar is stepping down. The stock is up 5%. The reason for that uh, is that this takes away uh, the uncertainty uh, around the transition at the bank. There was a lot of uh, questions about when the uh, committee report will come out. The committee was being headed by Justice Shri Krishna. Uh, what happens after that? Chanda Kochar's term was anyway expiring in March next year. Does she come back if she's exonerated? Does she stay beyond March? Uh, so there was this whole cloud of uncertainty which was doing uh, no favors to the bank uh, or to bank shareholders. Uh, what has happened now, of course, uh, is uh, that some of that con uh, clarity has be has come back. Uh, we have a new MD and CEO, uh, Sandeep Bakshi, a lifer. Uh, we will talk about him and his uh, background and what he can bring to the bank. Uh, but at this moment, uh, the big news is that Chanda Kochar uh, has uh, stepped down. Uh, Neeraj is joining me here as well. Uh, Neeraj, you will have a clearer understanding of how uh, markets see this because the stock has shot up as soon as that uh, uh, that announcement no, came I, through. I think you summed it up, Ida. I mean, the fact that one that uncertainty about who will or who will not be, if indeed there was a comeback from um, Chanda Kochar, would have been a question mark, and that's gone away. But I'm told Anil Singhvi of I Can Investment Advisors. Okay. Right, we'll get him back uh, in uh, half a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, I think uh, Sandeep Bakshi uh, uh, comes in uh, now almost immediately. Hmm. Uh, and you know, there, there is some familiarity with him. People that know who he is. So that will be my question to you, Ira. I mean, uh, yes, she was a veteran and all of that. But this uncertainty going away and somebody who has got continuation being at the hem or continuing at the hem, that should augur well for the bank. Uh, I think so. I think, uh, you know, uh, the two things get uh, uh, sort of resolved. Uh, one is that we know that the bank now has a new CEO. Now that new CEO's term will be decided and, you know, uh, will be looked at uh, in uh, in isolation from Chanda Kochar. Until now, he was the COO. Uh, second thing is that he is a familiar person. Uh, mm. He's been at one of the ICICI group companies. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, he's uh, known to be uh, someone who's uh, come through the ICICI ranks. So, you know, the DNA does not change entirely or mm. dramatically, uh, but it changes, uh, you know, away uh, from uh, what perhaps Chanda Kochar had brought. Or it may not be fair to entirely blame it on her, uh, but the period uh, of her tenure had been quite quite turbulent and you know Vishnath will come in and join us uh, and give us more details on that but uh, you know uh, so that that's the first that's the first point <laughs> yeah and frankly I mean just off record conversations with fund managers also and the conversations around what happens if this uncertainty lags or if uh, there were to be a comeback of some sorts that would have been a problem okay. Ida, that's gone All right. away. Uh, we've got some reactions coming in Mr. Kannan uh, of the Indian Banks Association joining us on the phone line Mr. Kannan afternoon uh, one more private bank management transition sir uh, what do you make of this I think, uh, you know, uh, from the bank's point of view, whatever was the uncertainty in the last three, four months, uh, that is uh, completely over. And uh, whatever would be the reasons for her quitting, and uh, the new new, uh, new management will uh, will continue. Sandeep Pakshi has already been in place for some time. And uh, going forward, I think I, I say we should be back to the normal way of working rather than being distracted by whatever was the development which happened. Uh, Mr. Kannan, uh, you know, we've seen uh, a very turbulent year in uh, private banks. We've seen uh, two uh, banks uh, lose their chiefs. Uh, this is Axis Bank. Uh, and we've got, of course, now ICICI Bank. Yes, Bank is in the middle of transition as well. Uh, are there implications for the industry in the sense that these were people who are aggressive in the project lending space, in the investment lending space? Uh, perhaps now the message that will go through to these private banks is let's stick to uh, the safe and tried and tested retail lending, which is not great for the economy. But you have to also understand that these uh, uh, bankers have been there for quite some time. So it's not something to do with only this particular year. There could be various reasons why they've been asked to uh, step down. And uh, some of them have already completed a pretty uh, long term. Therefore, that quitting should not be uh, taken uh, in in this context of what you are saying. Uh, as regards the uh, uh, project funding, I think uh, it is the entire banking industry uh, in at various stages have been uh, involved in the uh, uh, project financing and which didn't 
take off very well. Therefore, it's nothing to do with one particular bank or a only his private sector bank. Uh, Mr. Karan, this is Vishwanath here joining in this conversation. Just wanted to get uh, some sense on now in the statement that the that the bank's board has put out, they've said that the investigation that has been initiated by uh, the board uh, that will remain unaffected, and that certain uh, benefits that will be accrued will be dependent on the outcome of that investigation. Uh, you know, the question remains. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm not entirely sure what exactly the impact would be on uh, Chanda Kochar's uh, Chanda Kochar's presence in the bank uh, at the end of this. Uh, investigation uh, i am also as clueless about it so i think uh, we are uh, we are on the same side all right mr karan thank you for that quick view uh, let's uh, go across to amit tandon of ias uh, amit thanks for joining us uh, important moment uh, chanda kochar uh, just short of a decade at the bank uh, has stepped down All right, I think uh, we've lost him. Uh, we're trying to uh, get a whole bunch of reactions. Uh, but I think uh, to answer Vishnath's question, and uh, you know, we'll uh, let uh, Neeraj come in and uh, talk about a market perspective. I don't think the investigation gets uh, impacted in any way, right? The, uh, the investigation is in place. They complete it. They come out uh, with a verdict, uh, and that verdict is taken on board. But does um, that have any any kind of impact on uh, Chanda Kuchar now that she's not well, at the bank at all? It depends on the verdict and whether investigative agencies take it forward from there on, right? Her her tenure at the bank is already over. Uh, so you know, uh, the the question of the investigation impacting her tenure uh, is out of the uh, is out of the window now that story is over depending on what in if anything investigators find then you know it's it's in the hands of other agencies mm. but that's you know way in the realm of speculation when uh, we probably don't want to go there uh, but uh, you know for ICICI bank uh, i think just like access bank and yes bank uh, perhaps investors now need to take stock of what is the next leg of the bank going to look like yeah but you know just a thought i mean of the last 3 4 years or 5 years or the term I have, and, and i i think ira put it right that you don't blame it entirely on chanda kochar but during her term the term coincided with uh, a fair bit of issues that ICICI have banked to. Will investors now take a look at this, that, uh, take a look at it in a different way that there is a new CEO who might not do, or where the books might not get disrupted in a meaningful way going ahead, and there is probably certainty of somebody being at the helm or being uh, an insider of sorts in ICICI bank, now being out there, knows the workings in and around, and the valuations comforting enough, is that a good sign? Well, remains to be seen. Right now, the market doing what it is doing. I don't think people are looking at these issues. But the small spike out there suggests that, that if there was any thought or uncertainty about whether or not Chanda Kochar could make a bit of a comeback or otherwise, that now is out of the window. And that should be a net positive. You know, I, and we'll put this up, a question across to people like Amit Tandon when we do get them on the line. Uh, but I think one also must, uh, you know, perhaps look at uh, what she has done in uh, in the broader story mm. uh, you know if she had come back uh, there would have been questions about whether uh, it's appropriate or not even if those questions had died down there would have been questions about whether the rbi would have approved her tenure uh, if the assumption is that divergences and the bad loan problem uh, are the reasons behind uh, shikha sharma's term not being extended and rana kapoor being asked to step down uh, at the end of january uh, then it could have easily been extended to say that chanda kochar should also not stay uh, so in some ways i, I i'm not going to i'm hesitating to call it the high moral ground, uh, but to the extent that you can say that she has taken the high moral ground and saying, "I'm going, guys." That's right. It makes sense. I mean, about this amount, this amount of uh, sort of uncertainty with the leadership at ICICI had been continuing for a while. Uh, you know, even when uh, the AGM took place, and and uh, there yes. certain uh, shareholders had pointed out uh, that this was this was completely not done. That a the CEO wasn't present at the AGM, uh, even though she was on leave. Uh, and secondly, there were no questions answered of the shareholders as to what exactly happened uh, in the situation, and that uh, they were not uh, they were not informed regarding the developments in the. Uh, in the investigation that has been uh, that has been initiated by the board uh, under the leadership of Justice uh, B M Sri Krishna, uh, so you know a number of those questions, at least at least as far as Chanda Kocha's term goes, that seems to have been answered. We still have to wait and see what exactly this investigation finds out and if there's anything that needs to be found uh, at ICICI Bank in terms of their business. All right, uh, just let's step back uh, and remind ourselves that uh, this story has been going on uh, now since the early part of the year, and I think uh, we'll take a break. We'll perhaps come back uh, and get you more detailed uh, reactions uh, but at this point just remember that this story started at the start of the year uh, when uh, allegations started to do the rounds on uh, Twitter actually uh, not new allegations old allegations uh, then it went into uh, you know uh, the board first defending Chanda Kochar uh, right up front then getting criticized for that defense uh, then another whistleblower letter emerging after which formal inquiries were put in place there are two inquiries actually one being uh, conducted by Justice Sri Krishna and another one which is looking into the broader uh, practices at the bank uh, we don't 
could have the outcome of either of those inquiries. Uh, what we now know is that the Chanda, is that Chanda Kochar has decided to step down even before uh, she gets uh, either a clean shit or, uh, you know, to the contrary uh, from these inquiries. We'll come back with more on Bloomberg Quint, uh, just bringing you that breaking news there.